Look, there are a few things that get me as excited as owning Disney animation art. The artistry, the history, the creativity, and the nostalgia from seeing our favorite characters brought to life. I have got a full box of art here that I want to take a look at. It is from one of my very favorite time periods in Disney animation history. Of course, the Disney afternoon, but this is not just any artwork. This is creative development artwork, and it's got some special stories to go with it. Just an 80s boy and a 90s teen, going on all things Disney. From miles to parks and in between, come share the magic with me. La 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 la, la 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 la. Live your life to a Disney tune, come and share Jake's Disney Afternoon. Hey Disney Afternoon gang, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jake. If you're returning here, thanks for coming back. And if you're new, I do all kinds of Disney related content, unboxings, subscriptions, pins, hauls, trips, you name it. If it's Disney, we're doing it. So click that subscribe button so you don't miss out on the next Disney adventure. And of course, added to that list, I've got a box full of art today. So I love, love, love collecting Disney art. Um, it's not a cheap hobby, but um, as you can see behind me on the walls, I have got art from several different things. I've got some Darkwing Duck. I've got Little Mermaid, the TV series. I've got a, uh, Aladdin, the TV series. I've got some Wuzzles. Uh, and it is just one of my very favorite things to collect because I just love owning a piece of something that millions of people have seen on the screen. And of course, my respect for the artists, the animators, um, the writers who all put these shows together, these movies together that we love to watch. It's just really, really special. Um, especially knowing like one of those drawings is one of like 24 drawings that equal one second of finished film. So just looking at that piece and knowing that 24 of them were made just to produce a second of film. Wow, a lot of respect for those artists. So I do have a box here. I sort of am awkwardly showing it a little bit because my address seems to be on both sides for some reason. So um, I have pre-cut this box. So um, oh, I just, just love it. So this is a seller, a person I've bought from before. Um, they have sold me some artwork in the past and I've, I, uh, I bought from them again. So these are some special pieces because not only are the things you see behind me, wherever I'm pointing, these are all from actual finished um, films. So these are different episodes and things like that. What I have for you today is developmental art. Um, and developmental art is a whole special other kind of category because it shows the process that some of these shows and characters went through in order to get to the final form. Um, so let me see, here we go, I'm just cutting this, being as delicate as I can. So there are two artists that are represented here today. The first is Willie Ito, and Willie Ito is a hero to the Disney afternoon for several reasons. First of all, um, Willie Ito learned to draw from Sears catalogs while he was at an internment camp during World War II as a kid. He then went to college and was pulled out of college uh, in order to work for Disney. They actually kind of yanked him out. Um, notably for Disney, he worked on the Lady and the Tramp spaghetti kissing scene. Uh, you know, no small scene. Uh, after a little stint at Disney, he ended up working for Warner Brothers and Hanna-Barbera for a while, doing a lot of cartoons for them. And then in the late 70s, Willie Ido came back to Disney, uh, but as head of like marketing and art design for uh, merchandising at the time. And um, he only went back to work as an animator, as an artist um, for the animation side of things, one time, and that was in 1984, 1985, when he was doing developmental work on the newly formed Disney television animation studio. Of course, notably, that studio would go on to produce the Disney Afternoon. 
Uh, it was the first time Disney had broken into Saturday morning cartoons and that uh, kind of thing. They had always done features, small shorts that were released theatrically. So Willie Ida was brought back in. He oversaw a couple of things. It was the first time that Disney animation would be done by um, an overseas studio. They had done everything in-house. And so he had supervised a couple of auditions for studios in China. Um which I have some other artwork from specifically. But more than that, uh, he was called to work some redesigns. And he specifically did redesigns for the Wuzzles, which was the first to come out of the Disney Animation Television Studios, and then the Gummy Bears. Of course, we know the Gummy Bears because the Gummy Bears went on to multiple seasons. Wuzzles was canceled after 13 episodes for a variety of reasons. So the first batch of art that I have are drawings of the six main characters. And I actually, these are the last of the few that I don't own. I actually own probably another six or seven pages per character. Um, so this is Elleru. This is, um, this is one of his redesigns. So this is similar to the final character. A little bit of a cartoonier style, but the original designs that Disney was going with were really stodgy. I have some of that artwork too, um, and they were they were not what the studio wanted. So Willie was really responsible for kind of breaking them out of this. And so this is Elleru. The Wuzzles are uh, a hybrid of characters. So uh, Elleru is part elephant and part kangaroo. And then the next drawing I have is. Bumble Lion, who is part Bumblebee and Lion. And this is one of his original pencil drawings. Um, I have, like I said, a whole sheet of these. Maybe I'll show them off in another video if you're interested. Um, I have over 300 pieces of Wuzzles animation art in development art. Um, so this is such, such a great design. So well preserved uh, for being almost 40 years old at this point. We've got Hopoponymus is the next character. She is part uh, bunny and part hippo. And there she is in the blue graphite drawing, pencil drawing. And um, he did a whole series of these where they were doing different poses and different uh, characteristics that might define them. I absolutely love that drawing. And then here's a, a little drawing. So. What they would do is, this is Moosel. Everybody seems to love Moosel. This is, he's part moose and part seal. And um, these little drawings eventually would get cut up and they would be placed on um, larger paper, animation paper, and then photocopied. And then the photocopies would be sent to all of the animators who are working on the character as their guide. So that is why this one is cut up. For some reason, all of the original drawings I have of Musil in this style are all cut up. None of the other characters are. So I don't know if some of those are still out there. Uh, but somehow the one, the cut-ups of Musil's character survived. I have all the photocopies from the studio that the studio made to pass out to artists, so I can compare this drawing to one of the photocopied ones that I do have. And then we have, I guess I only have uh, five of the six in this lot. I do have the sixth character in another, uh, in another lot. But this is Butter Bear. Uh, she is part butterfly and bear. Um... She looks very much in her final form, like Sunny Gummy. A lot of similarities between the two. Most notably, they were yellow, but they do have a lot of similar characteristics. Um, again, beautiful, gorgeous, gorgeous drawing. And then the last thing I have of Willie Ito's drawings. I'm sure that's all of it. Um, so let me show you this thing first. So when the Wuzzles were released on VHS, I don't know if they were ever actually released in the United States on VHS. They were definitely released in Canada and in the UK, Australia, Italy, Germany, uh, Spain, a few of the Netherlands, a few countries. Um, this is a poster, uh, a VHS poster from a video store, remember video stores, uh, in Australia, I believe, 
pretty sure this one came from Australia. Um, and this was released uh, in 1990. So even five years after they were cut off, basically in the United States, they kind of disappeared after 86, 87. Uh, but in other countries, they went well into the 90s, except for a brief stint on the Disney Channel. When the Disney Channel first came out, uh, the Wuzzles were a featured program for a while. I think they were probably desperate for content. Uh, and so they did run on there for a while. But I want you to, I'm pointing out this uh, graphic in the middle here uh, with all of them in the car. Because this is the original drawing that was used for all of the marketing. This is on like a like a, um, like a transfer paper, right? You can kind of see this has been traced over um, and then they would photocopy it and use it on um, posters and things like this. I have this on several other, um, but this is um, specifically signed. You can see uh, signed by Willie Ido down there at the bottom of the page, which of course makes it extra special to me. Uh, and it says Wuzzles ad poster, Willie Ida, Walt Disney Company, 1985. Um, so this is just a super exciting piece to have this original graphic drawing in my collection. So I am grateful the seller was willing to part ways with it uh, and so happy to have it in the collection. The last piece uh, is by a lesser known artist, but is one of my very favorite pieces um, now in the collection. Um, there was an artist named Pat Paris, and she was known for illustrating children's books. Um, I think she's still working. I'm not 100% sure, but she definitely did a lot of books in the 80s and the 90s. She did like um, um, Ewoks and uh, Rose Petal Princess. Is that the name of it? Somebody will correct me. Um, and then a whole bunch of other books uh, for non sort of popular, but a lot of children's books illustrations. She was hired to also work on the Wuzzles. And the two pieces of art that I have from her, I'm not sure if they were designs for the actual concept of the show or if they were more designs for the books because she did end up illustrating the storybooks that each of the plushes, you can see the plushes behind me. There's Hoppo, there's Elleru, there's... Um, Butterbear is the yellow one right there behind me. She did illustrate the books that came with each of the plushes. So it's unclear to me. There's a lot of blurry lines when you're looking at the Wuzzles development because um, so much was new. People were just learning the ropes and there were a lot of blurred lines back then. But this is, um, it's called the, the Wuzzles and interesting spelling. Uh, and it says pan scene of island truck into view of Elleru's house and village in the background. And this is an original painting. Stunning. I mean, absolutely stunning, the artwork. Um, so uh, you can see that Pat Paris has signed it uh, down on the side there. Um, this Elleru's house is very similar to the one uh, that ended up in the show and in the books. Uh, Musil had sort of this lighthouse thing, and that is definitely a different design uh, and layout. We've got bumble lions. You see the beehive back there? They all had these really like cutesy houses that went with their like personality animal characters. And uh, Rhinoki's house with the banana like treehouse kind of situation in the background. But there is a view of the island of Was. Uh, as it was developed. I don't know, is there a date on this that might give us an indication? There is not. Um, she spelled Wuzzles differently, so this may have been, I'm guessing, very early on in the development before things were settled. Um, but the other one I have is just another, like, foresty kind of painting. It's less specific. Uh, neither of these were used anywhere, but um, it is just bewildering to me that I have these in my personal collection uh, and that I'm able to own this part of Disney history. Um, and of course, all of these things led to things like Chippendales Rescue Rangers and DuckTales, Tailspin, Goof Troop, all of the other shows that came after 
um, were a result of the development of work that Willie Ido and Pat Paris and the team who worked on getting the first Disney television animation studio up and running in 1984-1985 when Michael Eisner was taking over the company. I always feel the weight of the artist and the history anytime I open this kind of stuff because it's so important to remember all the things that we have started from people just doing the very best work that they could. And to have some of that in my collection just really truly means the world to me. I hope you enjoyed this kind of video. Um, I have a lot of artwork that I would love to show you and talk about, give you a little bit of history um, of the Disney Animation Studios. So um, tell me down below what your favorite piece was. Do you have a favorite Wuzzle? Uh, have you ever seen the Wuzzles before? Um, like this video. If you are not subscribed, you know what to do. Clickety click. We've got other adventures coming up. I've got some cool swaps coming up in the next couple of weeks and then some other things I'm really looking forward to sharing, including more artwork. So until the next Disney afternoon. Hope to see you back real soon, sharing in Jake's Disney afternoon.